Hey guys, uh, Jonathan Farmer here again today with OPST, and we are dying the beast of bourbon. This is a fun little pattern that uh, I typically fish unweighted. You could throw, um, you know, some jumbo lollies on here if you wanted to, but uh, we're just going to go ahead and get started. We're going to be using a 20 millimeter OPST intruder shank today. And we're going to be using OPST intruder wire. And the easiest way I've found to tie this wire in is to take it, split it apart, set it right over that shank, and then pull up. And really, what I like is to have it set in my vise not in line with the jaws, but against them. And then we get that intruder wire set nice and straight. And as I've said before, I don't recommend taking your nice scissors and cutting wire, but I do it all the time. It's not really too hard to get them sharpened. So crazy glue. We use a generous amount of crazy glue because we don't have a whole lot of space, you know, as far as length to lock that wire down. So I like a fair amount of crazy glue, err on the side of caution. We've only got about 20 millimeters, give or take, worth of shank space to lock in that. Go ahead and run our thread back. So the materials we're using today are going to be a flat diamond braid from Hairline. And we're going to use Arctic Fox. I like the Waters West Arctic Fox. Uh, it's some of the best that I've found. And this is the best that I've found. Um, and then some angel hair and fin raccoon and... OPST saddles and some flash, some marabou, some spay marabou from Nature Spirit. That stuff is fantastic. Uh, and some jungle cock and some silver pheasant. There's a lot of materials that are going to get packed into about eight millimeters, maybe ten mil, ten maybe ten millimeters worth of of shank. But we're going to run our flat diamond braid right up in front of the return but I'm gonna tie back onto it right to the right before the edge of that return and this is gonna be the whole entire space that we're gonna have to tie the, the whole front of this fly. So we're gonna start with an Arctic Fox shoulder and Again, having an under fur comb when you're working with any fur, whether it be Arctic Fox, Fin Raccoon, Craft Fur, uh, there's a whole ton of other things that you can use it for, but those are the three most common things that I use it for. It, it's really helpful to have one of these around. So I just took a nice little, little clump of Arctic Fox. I'd say this is about half the diameter of a number two pencil. And then we're going to take out the under fur, just with our brush or our comb, and get that out. Because we don't want a really big, massive shoulder, because everything will collapse around a big, massive shoulder. And so we'll really just thin this out really well. I like to leave the guard hairs in. It's a personal preference. I like how they pulse and twitch. So now that we've thinned this out. When you hold it up, you should be able to see daylight through that uh, Arctic Fox. And so we're going to use a little bit of, this is from Salar Synthetics. There's a whole bunch of, of uh, angel hairs out there. This one is in pink. The color combination we're doing today is kind of a freight train. Uh, color combination. Any color flash will work and be creative and and 
do whatever you really like and have confidence in. So we've got a little bit of angel hair mixed in with that Arctic Fox. I'm going to do a double loop. Close it off. We're going to run our thread forward about, about three to four millimeters. Put it in the loop. And again, I don't really like a big giant shoulder. Uh, we certainly don't need all of this excess in the back, but I really like to I prefer to trim it after it's in instead of guesstimating because, again, you can always take off. We can't add to it. So depending on how stout you want the shoulder or how much support you want, uh, if you're going to do one of these with Rhea, I've done some with Rio or Ostrich or uh, whatever you choose, the amount of butt section that you leave is going to determine how much uh, really support you're going to get. I don't like a ton, maybe a quarter inch, just less. It's about perfect in my opinion, and we're looking for about... Right at about two turns out of this Arctic Fox. That's that's really what I usually aim for is about two turns. We'll see how how accurate we were on that. So there's one. Landing right on two. Two turns is perfect. Three works just fine. If you're really over more than three, then there's too much Arctic Fox and maybe you should dial it back a little bit because it will affect the overall outcome of the, the fly and how it swims. You don't want it to be too terribly stout. So now we've got our, our little Arctic Fox shoulder. I'm going to use a, a crystal flash in fluorescent shrimp pink and Again, you can pick and choose whatever colors you want. This is what we're doing today. So I took three of these strands of flash. I'm going to fold it over and then cut it in half. And I'm just going to tie those in right on top. And we want them going just beyond the bend of the hook. trim them at slightly different lengths. And again, you can make them as long or as short as you want. I just kind of like this standard length of, uh, you know, this is actually about, oh, I'd say an inch past the bend of the hook, maybe an inch and a quarter. Um, I like to tuck the hook up in there a little bit. But then we're going to use some Fin Raccoon. And this Fin Raccoon is in fluorescent pink. This is a, it's a Wopsy product. You can find it in a lot of different places. Your local fly shop should probably have some thin raccoon. I'm just going to take a nice little clump. This is going to be our first real wing. This fly has three wings if you include the flash four, but I don't find that substantial enough to really make any difference. Just a little flash accent, but here's a nice little chunk. This is probably about the a quarter of uh, the diameter of a pencil. Take up that under fur. We're going to add this right in on top. And the fin raccoon should extend past the, the hook bend by, oh, about a quarter of an inch or so. We're going to make a couple of wraps to set that in place. We're going to trim that really close. Now to ensure that this arctic fox, or this fin raccoon rather, because we don't have a ton of room to really build up a lot of the red, we're going to take a little bit of crazy glue, we're going to 
going to run that on our thread. Just so you get a nice little bead. Not so much that it runs, but just enough so you can get a nice little bead of Crazy Glue. Or Zapagap, or whatever you prefer. I really like Crazy Glue. And so now we've got a nice little wing. So the next thing we're going to do is add, uh, add an OPST saddle. This one's in natural. This one's been heavily used by me. And I've already got a matching pair that I pre-picked. Well, I broke one of them. And you can really make these about as long or as short as you want. I like them to go roughly three quarters of an inch to an inch past the hook bend. If I'm if I'm tying this for myself, it's tucked up into the fly pretty good. If you want to be able to change your hook and set it a little bit further back, then maybe you aim for the hook bend. But we're not wanting to leave them just hanging out there too long. I mean, you could you could make them five inches if you wanted, but I think it makes the fly look a little disproportionate. But We'll add those in, tinted. This is where we really have to start watching our thread build up on this fly. Make sure that they're set nice and nice and even. Now for our spay marabou. This is uh, spay marabou from Nature Spirit. This stuff is fantastic. We'll tie it in by the tip. I like to double the tip back and then just break it off. It just adds a little bit more security. And then we're really looking for there's one Here's two, and again, this you know when you're working with feathers, you get individual you know uh, variation. So we're gonna go with three wraps with this one. Typically, I'm aiming for about two and a half, about two and a half turns. Uh, this one in particular was on the sparser side, so we just went with a full three. But as we work up to the eye, that's that's why starting this fly where it starts is so crucial. Because you want to leave yourself room for a head on this fly. You don't want to crowd the head too much because then you start running out of space and things start building up and it's really a mess. You just basically run out of room. So now we're going to take uh, two jungle cock nails. I like these a little bit on the longer side, so I'm using the ones from the middle top. And they have this natural curve to them, and I kind of, a lot of the time I have a tendency to, to do the opposite that I do with, with uh, like a saddle. So a saddle will have a curve where they, they have a tendency to splay away from each other. These, these have a tendency to bend toward one another. And so I'll actually take the one from the right and set it on the side close to me and the one from the left away from me. You'll see how they tint in just a second. I want that, that tint to go with the natural flow of the fly. So the, the left one going on the far side gives us that natural tip. Now we'll finish it off with some silver pheasant. And this is one that I pre-picked. I really like the longer 
silver pheasant feathers for this fly as opposed to the smaller ones. So I'll, I'll pick out all the longer ones out of the bag. And again, with, with silver pheasant especially, hackle pliers make things a lot easier. And we're just going to use up this feather. We're going to get right at two, two turns out of that. Build up a nice little hot head. Make sure everything's set correctly. If it flies heavy on one side or another, it'll, it'll really affect how it how it swims, and we want them to ride true. I don't typically do a hand whip finish. I'm not exactly sure where my whip finisher is right now. And we'll just coat the head. And crazy glue. And there it is. There's a beast of burden. Fun little pattern. You can tie in a whole ton of different colors. And hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a bunch.